Hi, everyone. It's Miss Greenhill, and we're back for another day of learning. So let's get started. All right, figurative language, here we go. So today, you will need a sheet of paper and a writing utensil for the lesson. Once again, learning targets, always important, have to know where we're headed. So our learning target for today, today I will identify and analyze the construction and impact of figurative language. So let's review days one through three. We talked about six different types of figurative language. We talked about similes, which are a comparison that uses the words like or as. We talked about metaphors that's also a comparison of two things, but doesn't use the word like or as. Hyperboles, which are an over-exaggeration. Personification, giving human-like qualities and abilities to non-human things. Onomatopoeia, the imitation of a sound in word form. And lastly, an idiom, an expression that means something different from the literal meanings of the words. So today we're gonna talk about figurative language in everyday life. You have probably been watching these past couple of days, like, oh my gosh, Ms. Greenhill, when are we gonna talk about something that we use every day in life? We're never gonna have to talk about figurative language unless it's an English class. But it's so not true. Figurative language, is everywhere, you just haven't recognized it. So I've attached two videos to today's lesson. One is about figurative language in music. The other is figurative language in movies and television. So after we're done today, click on the links, watch those, and I bet your mind will change. While you're watching, be careful and make sure that they are correct. And there are hundreds of videos on YouTube that are very similar if you wanna keep watching those. All right, but before we get to those YouTube videos, we are going to look at a passage and practice identifying figurative language there. This is where you will need your paper and your pencil. So on your paper, number one to five, when I begin reading on the next screen, you will see that there are five phrases that are underlined. You're going to identify the type of figurative language that is underlined. I did not write this story myself. It came from Mastery Education. I am going to read the story for those who would like to hear it. And if you work better reading to yourself, you can just pause the screen and read it to yourself and answer the question. After, we'll go over the answers. So let's go. The Mermaid Necklace. Sophia had always lived by the sea. And when she was a young girl, her grandmother would tell her stories about mermaids swimming in the ocean, their long hair waving like seagrass and their scale-like tails shimmering like polished glass. When the sea turned angry and gray during storms, Sophia would dream about being a mermaid. Her grandmother had told her that there was a necklace that could turn anyone who found it into a mermaid, but the necklace had disappeared long ago. Sophia wanted to find the necklace, but she was not sure where to look. So she decided to ask for help. Check the garden. Zillions of things are always falling out of people's pockets, the gardener said. Sophia did check the garden, but there was only a non-magical necklace that her sister had lost, which she later returned to her sister. Next, Sophia asked the local librarian. Check your books at home, the librarian recommended. Books are teachers. We can find many things in books. Sophia checked all the books, but alas, there she found no mention of a necklace, especially one that could turn a girl into a mermaid. So let's look at your answers. How many did you get right? Hopefully at least four out of five. And shout out to all those that got all five correct. 
All right, everybody, that's all we have for today. Um, can't wait to see you tomorrow. And don't forget to check out those um, YouTube clips. Have a wonderful day.